We'll be back from the break and you're still watching the point where we analyze uh, quite a number of economic policies in the country. And uh, uh, today we are discussing more of uh, women's economic empowerment. And because we believe this will lead to sustainable development mm -hmm. and economic growth because we are engaging everyone. It's, um, an, it's, a, it's an equal world where we have to engage everybody into the same think tank as the rest. And in Uganda, I, I think we've been able to have all these conversations um, way back for quite some time. And these um, situations where we've actually seen many women now taking up not only leadership roles, but also taking up big positions in different companies and different organizations. And I would believe that has been a very huge example to the young girls and, of course, all the rest. And the generations are really changing, which has even made it easier for the women to actually have their say in regards to Uganda's economy. And today, it's a bigger, bigger, bigger step that we have to really, really look at and celebrate. Now, when we return, um, like I did mention, though, that when we return, we are going to have our conversations rotating around the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Uh, when, uh, of course, I'm still with Miss Maureen Wagubi and um, Rita Kavanyoro, who are still taking us through all these discussions. I'll start with Maureen here. Uh, how can our women um, economic empowerment contribute to the achievement of this uh, United Nations Standard, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Okay. Mm. Um, first of all, we have to be cognizant that okay. uh, the SDGs, they're cross-cutting. Uh, they're cross-cutting uh, in line with economic empowerment. Mm. Because there is no way you can achieve economic empowerment and don't achieve the SDGs because they are aligned to economic there, empowerment. There are most of the goals in there. You know, mm. they're interlinked. There is no way you can say this one, this I will achieve this goal and this one I will not. No way. Yeah. So, and one of, okay, goal number one is eradicating poverty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm right, it's eradicating poverty. And when you empower the women economically, you know that they will be able to sustain their families. Yeah. And their livelihood will be improved and thereby eradicating mm -hmm. poverty. Okay. Do you see? Uh, then the issue of um, gender inequality, which is a big thing which is affecting women's economic empowerment. So if we are to fight gender, um, okay, gender inequality, economic yes. empowerment has a play there. You understand mm -hmm. that if a woman is economically stable, she has access to the resources like land. She has access to, you know, she can work, she can like access to all the resources that make life worthwhile. Mm -hmm then that, that is what we are looking at, equality. True. So we are already fulfilling those SDGs. Okay. And when you look at some of these specific goals, uh, like uh, gender in, um, equality, mm. especially, as we continue to push all of these, uh, can we be able to, uh, to at least sustain them? Because um, I'm, I'm bringing in Madame Rita here. When you look at sustainability, this is another big concern mm. in our country. Mm. How do we sustain uh, the women, you know, involvement in the most relevant parts of the economy. Mm. So when you find mm. economies like Uganda, yes, that depend, I mean, over 80% or so, mm. is depends on agriculture. True. We all know that most of the agricultural labor is women. It is these rural people that are doing the work. So if, if you can empower women to be very productive, they have access to productive assets, they have access to financial services, you are indirectly or actually directly growing the economy. So if we can have these people sorted or us, the women, sorted, it goes a long way. It has a very big butterfly effect on the entire economy as a whole. And that's something we can sustain. Because if you can equip this woman with the knowledge, you equip her with the resources, mm -hmm. you equip her with everything she needs to be as productive as possible. It's not something you'll take away from her tomorrow. I mean, if I get the knowledge and I know how to, how to do farming or do it very well, it's going to take a lot for you to take me back to where I am. If I understand my rights, it's difficult for you to take me back. So in that way, it becomes more sustainable. When we talk about good health and well-being, for example, that's SDG 3, I think. Mm -hmm. Women are primary caregivers in homes. Mm -hmm. 
So if we can make sure this woman has at least financial resources to access mm -hmm. better health care, to make sure her children are well fed and all of that, mm -hmm. it's something that you can sustain for a long time. It's something that she will be able to embed in her own girl children mm -hmm. to be able that the chain continues. Mm -hmm. okay. So it is very sustainable. I honestly believe it is sustainable. When you talk about zero hunger, we all know women are responsible for the nutrition of their households. Mm -hmm. You can teach this lady how to farm, how to feed her child very well, to, to, to enable the child to grow, to develop very well. Mm -hmm. So if you teach her and she understands it, this child is going to grow without being malnourished. This child has, their capacities are, are aggressively influenced. She's able to reach her full capacity. Mm -hmm. That's something you can sustain. So with these SDGs, there are things that I believe are low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. We just have to do a little bit, put in a little more effort to say, this is who we should target. This is a woman that we should give a lot of effort. And from mm -hmm. all of that, you will achieve a lot of the SDGs without putting in a lot of effort. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let me get back to Maureen here. Looking at access to markets, mm -hmm. women um, tend to access markets easier locally. Mm -hmm. If I'm to say, mm -hmm. in their localities, you, you in your suburb, wherever you're staying and you're, you're having your small business, you make mm -hmm. your kamani, your mama kaduka, mm -hmm. you, you, you've heard of all that. Mm -hmm. Now we have those who work in markets and everything. Mm -hmm. We've still had a challenge with the fact that women seem to be more comfortable in those, you know, in those settings mm -hmm. and very few yearn to expand. And yet we have room for expansion now. Kenya mm -hmm. is giving you the market. Mm -hmm. You have the DRC making it the, the sixth of um, on the market list because it's now the seventh in the East African community. Now, besides that, we also have the AFC FTA, mm -hmm. uh, which is giving us a very huge opportunity for anyone to strike mm -hmm. and at least mm -hmm. expand and grow your business and everything. Mm -hmm. what, is, um, what do you think is undermining uh, the progress of expansion in regards to the women in business and what should be done? Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh... When I'm answering that question, I have to ask, what's the thing behind the thing? Mm -hmm. Some well, people mm -hmm. assume okay. that women just want to be small. Okay. But what are those underlying chains around mm -hmm. this woman? Yeah. It's that are making people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because look at her triple roles as a woman. True. If I'm to give the picture of this woman in the informal sector, the ones that I'm working with in the market. Mm. Most of them don't even have access to this information. You can ask them because we have just conducted a research on the, you know, mm. uh, their understanding about the, these regional, inter-regional trade policies that are running around. For example, the African trade, African free trade area. True. How many know about it? What are the modalities of doing business formally? Most businesses are not registered. So how are you going to dress across the border? How are you going to deliver your products? Mm. And which kind of products are you going to take to the other side? Mm -hmm. They have not conducted market research. No value addition on their products. Because you know, most of the markets are selling, you know, uh, agricultural products. Mm. Which have a low shelf life. That's literally, tomorrow mm. you bring your, 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 your crate of tomatoes. Tomorrow they are bad. They have gone bad. But how many are you also bringing? We are looking at that. How are they organized? Those are all elements that can propel them to participate in the cross-border trade. Because we are saying they have limited capital. That is a big challenge to them. But again, are they organized? That is where we are coming in to say, you know, we have to empower these women to form these collectives or the cooperatives to ensure that they can be able to trade fully with the other side. Mm. So how are we preparing them? Do they even know how to read and write? Can they balance their books? Do they know the, the modalities of URA issues to do with mm -hmm. paying taxes? Because now for URA has gone E. Yes. You know? And you can e technology. You know, as in, are they are. able to mm -hmm. use these smartphones to go on the website and clear their good? How? So when we are saying women want to be small, I don't think we are being fair enough. Okay. Have we given them that information that they require to position them to go there? Okay. So it starts with 
understanding this woman and how we want them to be positioned. But bring that information to them, okay. then they will appreciate it. Rita, let's look at the cross-border trade here. Um, businesses seem to, to at least focus more here. I, I don't wish to only say women, by the way. There are quite a number of roles as mm. well that include the men. Mm. Now, this brings me to the element of um, how can we uh, have the element of how can we use technology mm. to shape up women in business, if you are to take on that. Uh, because first of all, uh, like she has mentioned, you are, for example, Mm. The things are turning to to the to the digital space. Mm. It's now e-commerce all over. Mm. How are women going to 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 get involved here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. First of all, like she alluded and said, we yes. need to give them this information. Okay. We've also seen very successful technological interventions. For example, mm. when Safe Border comes and says, "I'm putting the market woman mm. on an app where someone at home is able to go there and order for." foodstuffs from a market mm. and this market woman who may not even know english is able to receive this order and send the goods over i think those are very very simple very basic interventions that mm. we can easily achieve so first of all give them the information train them and then for others you'll find there's limitation with the technological devices that we have if we can have Maybe if we bring in inter international actors who can say we are willing to provide these resources, we are willing to buy the smartphones, for example, we are willing to provide the platforms, we are willing to build these apps that can be accessed by anyone in any language. I think that would also foster a lot of these technological advancements that we are trying to do. We are in a world where we are talking about electric cars. People are talking about going to Mars on holiday or just for leisure. Mm -hmm. And yet it is the very same world where mm -hmm. there are many people who don't have access to internet. There's a market mm -hmm. woman who doesn't know what internet is. Mm -hmm. If you went to a village, they don't know. So te technology has significantly advanced, but I also think we are leaving a lot of us behind. Most especially the women, because we've marginalized women to say they belong to the kitchen, they okay. belong at home, they mm -hmm. belong in that small corner, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be involved in the big decisions. Okay. You know, so we need to be deliberately inclusive, deliberately take this information to them, train them, build their capacity, mm -hmm. involve them, make sure they can make the decisions they need to make. Okay. Yeah. Any addition to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Richard, for mm -hmm. that submission. I think it's yeah, it's wonderful, but I just wanted to bridge with the, um, a live example, okay. because as the IST, mm -hmm. we have uh, developed what we call the Market Garden application, okay. and it's an online application that is enabling these women in the informal sector sell their products online. Okay. And mm -hmm. this came into force uh, during the first lockdown. Okay. But even yeah. as we were putting it together, mm -hmm. we didn't know that there would be even covid and the country will go under lockdown. Yes. So it was like in 2018 when we started developing the app. Mm -hmm. And here it was. It, mm -hmm. it helped people. But how did we do it? Because we had now to position these women mm -hmm. on how to deal with virtual clients, which they had never been, you know, through. Okay. And also, uh, Richard talked about access to some of these gadgets because mm -hmm. you're bringing the market woman on board. Yes. She doesn't mm -hmm. have a smartphone. Mm -hmm. But here it is, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the system to help her make you know uh more sales mm -hmm. you know so we had you set yourself up for my next question which is how effective has the app been um mm -hmm. the app actually it was that period of the lockdown mm -hmm. because people were uh you know under lockdown exactly. so no they had no option of moving yet. around mm -hmm. so they would make the orders online okay and it was really working very well mm -hmm. uh then we of course when we're back to normal mm -hmm. Some of them had it, to yes, from of course. The idea. Yeah, we went back to the usual way of doing things, but we are still promoting it because this is where the world is going. So we have to be ready for it. Okay. Uh, the 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 e-commerce is the way to go. Okay. So for me, I feel like the number of things that we need to put together, especially in line with access to internet, because internet also limits. Yes. We appreciate mm -hmm. government has gone mm -hmm. forward to put my UG. But my UG is not covering everywhere. Mm. So we need it also to be amplified to support those people, but also to bridge the gender digital mm. divide. Because we found that even when we gave smartphones, like the male ego, you know, the patriarchal mm. syndrome, yeah. some of the, mm. the sons to these market women 
took the phones away from their mom mm -hmm. uh, because they felt like they, they are not technologically compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, the men, some of them said, you know, bring the phone, you're mm -hmm. going to start sharing pictures with men. The uh, other funny twist about social media, by the way, is mm -hmm. it, it tends to, to create a division. Mm -hmm. How? At times, we tend to look at this phone as an element of driving business in any way. Mm -hmm. But believe me, you're not. Mm -hmm. At one moment, mm -hmm. you're going to get overboard mm -hmm. and get into, you, you have a TikTok app, for example, mm -hmm. a WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. At times, we've seen people who started up with WhatsApp business. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all the possible clients mm -hmm. have turned into status viewers yeah. and people you're just talking to. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you've lost the clients. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we can, you know, try to, to create that kind of situation whereby the phone is really going to bring us more money. You remember, Sonko, what I said, mm. that you must be having your goal. A, yeah, Even exactly. when I have the smartphone, I know what exactly am I doing with my phone. True. I'll give yeah. you an example. Yes. That for me, I'm in, I'm in the tailoring industry. Yes. Like my clients, I can send Rita. I said, Rita, this can look good on you. True. So I'm like telling Rita, let mm. me know if you like it. I come and take your measurements. Oh, okay. You see, mm -hmm. that it depends on you. What are you doing with the phone? Because there is excitement also. If I've never had a smartphone, it's my first time. And I, oh, it's sorry. Okay. It's okay. Like, you know, everything is happening so fast that mm -hmm. I, I have also now to take it on. And then later on, you will slow down because mm -hmm. it, it is no more you have it. Mm -hmm. And you know how to use it. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing is what is your ambition? Mm -hmm. And you have to be very intentional in some of the things. So we build the capacities of these people, how to use them, but also to be very intentional when it comes to business, because you have it to make more money. Okay. There is time for fun, which is also okay. Yeah, but again, what is your agenda? Okay. Yes. Let's talk about mindset and Rita. Uh, the mindset of uh, the women, you know, we've mentioned about awareness and everything. Mm. What is their mindset? Do you think the majority of women are ready to venture into these businesses? Um, bare knuckles where they want to achieve something huge or they are comfortable with just being okay with the small amount of their earning as long as the business is there? I think mm. the situation we are in now as an economy, as a yes. country, mm -hmm. doesn't really give you much of a choice to settle. True, true, true. So even for a woman who's mm -hmm. a rural woman in a village, yes. when yes. they go without a meal, when they watch the children going hungry, when they see that they are like the last person to eat and yet they're doing all the work during that time, that should leave a level of discomfort in you. So women across the country, across the globe are starting to question these things. So all they need, all they need now is the support or the infrastructure to harness this, this discomfort that's coming in them. Mm. It's very difficult now to find a woman who's settled to say, I'm just going to sit at home and do nothing and wait for. Everyone is trying. They'll have a small stall of tomatoes and onions somewhere. They'll have something they're trying to venture into. It may not be extensive, but everyone is trying. So it's inevitable for them to step out of their comfort zone. The ones that are in some kind of comfort zone, uh, they have support structures around them if you can find a corporate who says i'm going to settle for this job that's paying a little there's something else that's supporting the kind of livelihood they're living but for most of the women in our country there is no choice however what i realize is it is happening subconsciously it's not that we are intentionally saying i'm going to change my mind about this or someone has told me about this mm -hmm. the situation dictates that you change your mind Okay. So now it is upon us who mm. know, us who mm. are aware about these things, like okay. we, we talked earlier and said, mm. we need to make sure they understand what mm. this means for them and how they can get out of whatever situation they are in. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Maureen, how can we get these women into positions where they influence decision making? Mm. Uh, we now have women who are in serious leadership roles. They influence. We are here. And now we want to, exactly, <laughs> the, the, the clearest example is here. So if, if you have to look at that, how can we have many of those? You know, mm. in society, wherever we go in um, any kind of leadership and, and stuff, it is very rare mm. to see women taking up the pole positions. Mm. First, most of them are scared, mm. not because they don't want to, yeah. uh, but because they're either scared of their responsibility mm. or scared of the fact that they may not be chosen. Mm. But how do we put them there? How do we, you know, not force but try to create a platform mm. to ensure that they stand up and uh, influencing decisions, whether in leadership 
for business. Mm. Thank you, Sonk. Okay. You know, whenever you talk about leadership and mm. all these things, I'm looking at <laughs> where you okay. come from um, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. as IST, okay. because uh, our major pillar is transformational leadership. Okay. Because leadership is key in whatever we are doing. And we are all decision makers True. in whichever space. So I, I don't uh, trivialize leadership saying, ah, she's a leader, but not, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are always yeah, yeah, looking okay. at the other leadership, yeah, okay. but mm -hmm. everybody's a leader. But, her, you know, taking decisions in these homes. Mm -hmm. So as me or as, you know, as all the process that I went through, mm -hmm. that we have to let people know their rights. Okay. Women's rights. Mm -hmm. Because when you know your rights, you will be able to advocate for change. Mm -hmm. But what limits other women? Because they don't know their rights. This is their space. But we have been talking about the social and cultural norms, where we have been brought up and they have positioned us that the man is supposed to be the leader. Yeah. You see? That, you know, when a man, you sit down, the man sits on the chair. They, you know, it starts like that. Eh? But we are changing the system, saying, you know what? You, you can do it. Look at so-and-so. They have done it. We have the likes of Kadaga, those ladies mm -hmm. who have been there. Mm -hmm. And people are looking to them and saying, I would love to be like Kadaga. How do I do it? Mm -hmm. So we take you through the mentorship journey. We train you how to get there, okay. but also setting those platforms where you give the women chance to participate. Mm -hmm. Those who are ready, okay. you don't post them. Okay. Those who feel they are ready, they mm -hmm. buy. Mm -hmm. And they're erected and they are there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, okay. getting them into the spaces mm -hmm. because showing them that they can, but this also comes from inside them. You okay. don't come and dictate, ah, because Rita, you talk so well, you can be a leader. If no, she is she to. ready? Okay. Is she ready to take mm -hmm. it on? So you have to take her through that mentorship journey of leadership. True. And she'll be like, now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen, you know, this process take place in these informal sectors. And women have taken on leadership mm -hmm. in the market. Mm -hmm. Women have taken on leadership in the cooperatives. Yeah. You see, they are managing those cooperatives. And I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. but before they would tell you, no, 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 I fear, let the man speak for me. Even you as the media, when you go there, you're like, let me speak the man. But I'm a child, I here. You understand? You use that kind of language, but you're like, no, mm -hmm. understand who this woman is. Mm -hmm. So we try to tell them, no, you can speak to the media because you will be able to represent the issues that affect women Directly. better than the man because mm -hmm. the man will be representing issues that affect the men. Yeah, yeah, but for me as a woman, I will speak on issues that affect my fellow women. Ably, and mm. people will understand. Okay. Than the man. Okay. So we have built their capacity to get them to speak. And demand power of voice. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you keep quiet, people will not know. They hardly. Yes. Mm. So speak up. Okay. But how do you speak? That is also the other side. How do you speak? Not okay. just speaking, but how do you speak? And what do you say? Mm. Well, Empowering the them, mm. giving them the skills of questioning. Mm. Okay. Because we have grown up where in a, an era where people were telling us, you understand? Allow me to use Luganda. <laughs> I think it's okay. they, you, mm. you don't question an elder. But there are things when elders are doing mm. things that don't add up. And then you kept like, you know, let me just keep it. I'm not supposed to. But for us who are now growing up from this, you know, information age, yeah. my daughter is asking me, mommy, but are you sure? Are you sure what you're doing is right? Mm -hmm. Don't you think? And then she's questioning it. And sometimes you're like, oh, my God, I think I'm. I know. And I don't stop them from questioning because that is power. That is where the power of voice comes from. Okay. Yeah. And well, of course, for those who are just joining us, uh, we're just heading into a break for now. Uh, but we're going to be returning with uh, more of our conversations pertaining around women empowerment. And um, when we return, uh, we're going to have a very huge concern pertaining around workspaces and the freedom that comes to different workspaces, one of which includes um, sexual harassment, which is eating up our country, uh, not only in leadership, the issue to do with leadership, by the way, is something very, very important because if you capture money and power, 
uh, you seem to be very powerful as an individual in the world that we are in. Mm. Uh, but for the moment, we are going to be discussing more about how women can survive uh, this kind of vice and this kind of element when it comes to sexual harassment. How can they deal in such spaces? Because you're not going to chase away a man anyway. If at all, he's going to be very helpful to you. But how do you deal with him? And of course, there's a simpler way of dealing with these people without them getting what they want, but still in a more professional manner uh, where it's a win-win situation for the both of you. So how you position yourself and stand at your feet as a woman is what we want to identify and find out more of what is coming up after the break. You're still watching The Point. Keep it up here.